Smith's first professionally published SF story, Scanners Live in Vain, originally appeared in Fantasy Book in 1950 Smith's novel at the Ballad of Lost Kamel was the cover story on the October 1962 issue of Galaxy Science Fiction. Artwork by Virgil Finley Smith's novelette Drunk Boat took the cover of the October 1963 issue of Amazing Stories. Art by Lloyd Birmingham Paul Meyer and Anthony Linnebarger, better known by his pen name Cordwainer Smith, was an American author known for his science fiction works. Linnebarger was a U.S. Army officer, a noted East Asia scholar, and an expert in psychological warfare. Although his career as a writer was shortened by his death at the age of 53, he is considered one of the more talented and influential science fiction authors. Linnebarger's father, Paul Meyer and Wentworth Linnebarger, was a lawyer and political activist and advisor to Sun Yat-sen and had close ties to the leaders of the Chinese Revolution of 1911. In order for Linnebarger to be eligible to become President of the United States, his father sent Linnebarger's mother to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to give birth to him there. Linnebarger's godfather was Sun Yat-sen, who was considered the father of Chinese nationalism. His young life was unsettled as his father moved the family to a succession of places in Asia, Europe, and the United States. He was sometimes sent to boarding schools for safety. In all, Linnebarger attended more than 30 schools. In 1919, while at a boarding school in Hawaii, he was blinded in his right eye and it was replaced by a glass eye. The vision in his remaining eye was impaired by infection. Linnebarger was familiar with English, German, and Chinese by adulthood. At the age of 23, he received a PhD in political science from Johns Hopkins University. From 1937 to 1946, Linnebarger held a faculty appointment at Duke University where he began producing highly regarded works on Far Eastern affairs. While retaining his professorship at Duke after the beginning of World War II, Linnebarger began serving as a second lieutenant of the United States Army, where he was involved in the creation of the Office of War Information and the Operation Planning and Intelligence Board. He also helped organize the Army's first psychological warfare section. In 1943, he was sent to China to coordinate military intelligence operations. When he later pursued his interest in China, Linnebarger became a close confidant of Chiang Kai-shek. By the end of the war, he had risen to the rank of major. In 1947, Linnebarger moved to the Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies in Washington, D.C., where he served as professor of Asiatic Studies. He used his experiences in the war to write the book Psychological Warfare, regarded by many in the field as a classic text. He eventually rose to the rank of colonel in the reserves. He was recalled to advise the British forces in the Malayan Emergency and the U.S. Eighth Army in the Korean War. While he was known to call himself a visitor to small wars, he refrained from becoming involved in the Vietnam War, but is known to have done work for the Central Intelligence Agency. In 1969 CIA officer Miles Copeland Jr. wrote that Linnebarger was perhaps the leader practitioner of black and gray propaganda in the Western world. According to Joseph Burkholder Smith, a former CIA operative, he conducted classes in psychological warfare for CIA agents at his home in Washington under cover of his position at the School of Advanced International Studies. He traveled extensively and became a member of the Foreign Policy Association, and was called upon to advise President John F. Kennedy. In 1936, Linnebarger married Margaret Snow. They had a daughter in 1942 and another in 1947. They divorced in 1949. In 1950, Linnebarger married again to Genevieve Collins, they had no children. They remained married until his death from a heart attack in 1966, at Johns Hopkins University Medical Center in Baltimore, Maryland, at age 53. Linnebarger had expressed a wish to retire to Australia, which he had visited in his travels. He is buried in Arlington National Cemetery, Section 35, Grave No. 4712. His widow, Genevieve Collins Linnebarger, was interred with him on November 16, 1981. Linnebarger is long rumored to have been Kirk Allen, the fantasy-haunted subject of the jet-propelled couch, a chapter in psychologist Robert M. Lindner's best-selling 1954 collection The 50-Minute Hour. According to Cordwainer Smith scholar Alan C. Elms, this speculation first reached print in Brian Aldiss's 1973 History of Science Fiction. Billion Year Spree, Aldiss, in turn, claimed to have received the information from science fiction fan and scholar Leon Stover. More recently, both Elms and librarian Lee Weinstein have gathered circumstantial evidence to support the case for Linnebarger's being Allen, but both. 
Can see there is no direct proof that Linnebarger was ever a patient of Lindner's or that he suffered from a disorder similar to that of Kirk Allen. According to Frederick Pohl in his stories, which were a wonderful and imitable blend of a strange, raucous poetry and a detailed technological scene, we begin to read of human beings in worlds so far from our own in space and time that they were no longer quite Earth. And the people were no longer quite human, but something perhaps better, certainly different Linnebarger's identity as Cordwainer Smith was secret until his death. Cordwainer is an archaic word for a worker in cordwain or cordovan leather, a shoemaker, and a smith is one who works in iron or other metals, especially a blacksmith or farrier, two kinds of skilled workers with traditional materials, Linnebarger also employed the literary pseudonyms Carmichael Smith, Anthony Bearden and Felix C. Forrest. Smith's stories are unusual, sometimes being written in narrative styles closer to traditional Chinese stories than to most English language fiction, as well as reminiscent of the Genji tales of Lady Murasaki. The total volume of his science fiction output is relatively small, because of his time-consuming profession and his early death. Smith's works consist of one novel, originally published in two volumes in edited form as The Planet Buyer, also known as The Boy Who Bought Old Earth, and The Under People, and later restored to its original form as Norstralia, and 32 short stories, including two versions of the short story War No. 81Q. Linnebarger's cultural links to China are partially expressed in the pseudonym Felix C. Forrest, which he used in addition to Cordwainer Smith, his godfather. Sun Yat-sen suggested to Linnebarger that he adopt the Chinese name Lin Bailo, which may be roughly translated as Forest of Incandescent Bliss. In his later years, Linnebarger proudly wore a tie with the Chinese characters for this name embroidered on it. As an expert in psychological warfare, Linnebarger was very interested in the newly developing fields of psychology and psychiatry. He used many of their concepts in his fiction. His fiction often has religious overtones or motifs, particularly evident in characters who have no control over their actions. James B. Jordan argued for the importance of Anglicanism to Smith's works back to 1949. But Linnebarger's daughter Rosanna Hart has indicated that he did not become an Anglican until 1950, and was not strongly interested in religion until later still. The introduction to the collection Rediscovery of Man notes that from around 1960 Linnebarger became more devout and expressed this in his writing. Linnebarger's works are sometimes included in analyses of Christianity and fiction, along with the works of authors such as C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. Most of Smith's stories are set in the far future, between 4,000 and 14,000 years from now. After the ancient wars devastate Earth, humans, ruled by the instrumentality of mankind, rebuild and expand to the stars in the Second Age of space around 6,000 AD. Over the next few thousand years, mankind spreads to thousands of worlds and human life becomes safe but sterile. As robots and the animal derived under people take over many human jobs and humans themselves are genetically programmed as embryos for specified duties. Towards the end of this period, the instrumentality attempts to revive old cultures and languages in a process known as the rediscovery of man, where humans emerges from their mundane utopia and under people are freed from slavery. For years, Linnebarger had a pocket notebook which he had filled with ideas about the instrumentality and additional stories in the series. But while in a small boat in a lake or bay in the mid-sixties, he leaned over the side, and his notebook fell out of his breast pocket into the water, where it was lost forever. Another story claims that he accidentally left the notebook in a restaurant in Rhodes in 1965. With the book gone, he felt empty of ideas, and decided to start a new series which was an allegory of mid-eastern politics. Smith's stories describe a long future history of Earth. The settings range from a post-apocalyptic landscape with walled cities, defended by agents of the instrumentality, to a state of sterile utopia, in which freedom can be found only deep below the surface, in long-forgotten and buried anthropogenic strata. These features may place Smith's works within the dying Earth subgenre of science fiction. They are ultimately more optimistic and distinctive. Smith's most celebrated short story is his first published, Scanners Live in Vain, which led many of its earliest readers to assume that Cordwainer Smith was a new pen name for one of the established giants of the genre. It was selected as one of the best science fiction short stories of the pre-Nebula Award period by the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, appearing in the Science Fiction Hall of Fame Volume 1, 1929-1964. The Ballad of Lost Kamel was similarly honored, appearing in the Science Fiction Hall of Fame, Volume 2. After Scanners Live in Vain, Smith's next story did not appear for several years, 
but from 1955 until his death in 1966 his stories appeared regularly, for the most part in galaxy science fiction. His universe featured strange and vivid creations, such as, titles marked with an asterisk are independent stories not related to the instrumentality universe. Thanks for watching.